Hi, my name is Rodrigo. This is Ether, and we are doing a series on the parables of Jesus. And today we're going to look at the parable of the secret growth. I don't know that that's what it's actually called, but that's what we're going with. And we're going to be looking at Mark 4, verses 21 through 29. The actual parable is only in verses 26 to 29, but I think to really understand this parable, you have to include verses 21 to 25th. And so, without further ado, let's do some reading! He said to them, Is a lamb brought in to be put under the bushel basket, or under the bed, and not on the lampstand? For there is nothing hidden except to be disclosed, nor is anything secret except to come to light. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. And he said to them, Pay attention to what you hear. The measure you give will be the measure you get, and still more will be given you. For those who have, more will be given, and from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. He also said, The kingdom of God is, is, is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces for itself first the stock, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe at once, he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. He also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces for itself first the stock, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle because the harvest has come. We interrupt a regularly scheduled programming to bring you an explanation of a literary feature of the Book of Mark that you probably never care to know, but that is important for us to understand the parable of the secret growth, and that is the Mark sandwich. Of course, we're talking about chapter 4, verses 21 through 29, and I'm going to draw some lines here that represent the verses in question, so bear with me. So these lines represent, this is verses 21 through 23. These are verses 24 and 25. And these, of course, are verses 26 through 29. And so the way the sandwich works and the reason why the sandwich is called the sandwich is because you have these three verses that are one idea. Let's we'll call it idea A. And then the bottom three verses that revisit this idea, which we're also going to call A, and then in the middle, you have your meat, which is idea B. And so these two ideas are related. And in the middle, sometimes there's an idea that doesn't have to do anything with these two. Sometimes it supports these two. And sometimes it's kind of the punchline or what uh, Mark really wants you to remember that is going to be in B. So with that explanation out of the way, back to our regularly scheduled programming. In this case, verses 21 through 23 are related in that they are both speaking to the fact that the kingdom of God is inevitable. Yes, one may try to hide a lamp, but it will eventually shine in the darkness, and a seed is not much to look at until it's time for the harvest. What Jesus is saying in this context is that the kingdom of God is finally here, and it will now shine in the spotlight, and the time for the kingdom's harvest has indeed come. Verses 24 and 25 then support this idea by Jesus telling people that they really need to hear to what he's saying because otherwise they might not believe that the kingdom of God has finally come. And we know that a lot of people didn't. We may sit here and ask ourselves how come people didn't believe that Jesus had indeed begun the kingdom of God. But when you think about it, it actually makes a little bit of sense. Because he's, here was this carpenter from Nazareth telling people that the kingdom of God was here, and yet Rome still ruled over Israel. The Pharisees and Sadducees, who were the religious leaders of the time, opposed Jesus. And Herod. And not one of King David's descendants was sitting in the throne in Jerusalem. Jesus' team did not seem like the winning team. And yet the whole point of this parable is that the kingdom of God is inevitable. The fact is that the kingdom did not need the support of these groups to triumph. The triumph came through Jesus' death and resurrection actually at their hands. The kingdom was always going to happen one way or another. Today, there's a lot of talk about how there's a decline in Christianity and how the culture opposes Christianity. And I think this worries a lot of us. 
But what we can learn from this parable and what we really need to hear are the words of Jesus, who again tells us that the kingdom of God is inevitable. Even if someone out there is trying to suppress the light of the kingdom, it will eventually shine. And somewhere in the night, the seeds of the kingdom are growing and God will have his harvest. The nature of the kingdom hasn't changed. And this parable is describing something really powerful about the nature of the kingdom that we need to believe even today. I hope that this video is really encouraging to you. And if you're enjoying this series, uh, please give us a follow. And also, uh, give us your comments in the comments because we really want to build a community around these videos. And thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.